Hello everyone, this is Dark Blue. As the Mortal Empire mode of Total War Warhammer 3 is about to kick off, I think it's a good chance to make a series of Total War Warhammer Beginner's Guide video. So in this video, I will introduce why this game is worth playing and how to buy it. And in the end, I will also explain the purpose of this video series. So why should you play Total War Warhammer? Ah, the whole Total War series is unique. It combines turn-based strategy game and real-time strategy game. In the campaign mode, we play in a turn-based fashion, but in the battle, it becomes real-time strategy. In a pure turn-based game, the capacity of your armies is typically fixed, but in Total War, you can boost your army with your excellent com commanding. Winning battles that would be lost if fighting automatically. And in a pure real-time game like StarCraft, usually you will do everything in the real-time fashion. Mining, leveling up your base, producing new units. But in Total War, these details are dealt with in campaign. And the only thing you need to do in the battle is to fight. So in this way, Total War consists of these two parts. And it's interesting. It's definitely worth trying if you like strategy games. And the three Warhammer games are even outstanding among the whole Total War series. This is of course partly because of the fascinating Warhammer world. And the newest few games from the series are almost all Warhammer. The only exception with enough effort from say is Three Kingdoms, which is also great. Since they are the newest, you can at least expect good appearance and modern gaming system. No matter whether, whether these games are good for old fans, uh, they are good for beginners. And come on, Warhammer is a world with magic. In historical Total War, you have only soldiers with different weapons or on the back of horses. But in Warhammer, you can have literally beasts, monsters, flying beasts and monsters, and magic. This might make it hard to balance, but the game is more fun. And the game is for fun, right? Anyway, I strongly recommend Total War Warhammer series, but you may find it puzzling how to buy this game, as there are really too many DLCs. So, so time for Patrician's suggestion. So now this series consists of three games, each one with many DLCs. These three games are not entirely independent. If you have more than one on your account, you can unlock some special mode. For example, Warhammer 1 and 2 each has an independent campaign, but if you have both of them, you can play Mortal Empire campaign, which contains the world and factions of both two games. And the Immortal Empire consists of all three games. And then DLCs. There are mainly three kinds. One that is free, also called FLC. It adds only to one existing faction the following content. One legendary lord and some units that can be used by the entire faction. And the second one adds these things to two factions that are against each other. And the last kind will contain everything in a totally new faction. Let's say you don't want to play these new legendary lords for now. Will these DLCs bring any difference? Yes, they give you new units that can be used by the entire faction and the newly added legendary lords will act in the campaign controlled by CPU. Their place would otherwise be some non-legendary lords or even no one, and this difference can influence your campaign strategy. So theoretically, you need to buy every DLC in order to get full experience, and you need all three Warhammer games with every DLC to get full Immortal Empire experience, and this is really expensive. Well, there will be differences in your game without some DLCs, but this game is still worth playing anyway, so you can download all FLCs, and then wait for sales to buy other DLCs if you really like this game. And uh, Mortal or Immortal Empire are not for beginners anyway, you will most likely spend much time on independent campaign. And some of my personal suggestions. Warhammer 2 is better balanced than Warhammer 3, which is still being developed. 
and its faction design is more aggressive than Warhammer 1, so you can consider Warhammer 2 as a good start. That's all for purchasing the device, now let's talk about my beginner's guide. We know almost all strategy games are demanding, this game is not an exception. So there have been many Total War tutorials already, so what's unique of my guide? Well, there have been basic mechanics guide, in a, well, very, very basic way. But this helps little when you are making the expanding plan for your faction. I myself was faced with great difficulty after my first campaign with Tyrion. Uh, to be honest, Tyrion's campaign is too easy. And after that one, I tried Malekith, and uh, well, I had a few months not wanting to enter this game again. Also, there have been videos about advanced tricks, but they are not for beginners, and walk through for a certain legendary lord on how to win the campaign. But. How could you get the joy from thinking then? So I want to do something that hasn't been done before. I will make a guide that can help you learn to think by yourself. And after learning, you can fully enjoy thinking in this strategy game. And that's why people like this game genre, isn't it? I plan to start still from the most basic mechanics and the system production, but this is not intended to cover everything in this game. It's only to help you get familiar with this new world. And then it's time for some guiding principles for battle and campaign. They will hopefully help you thinking rather than restricting your mind. And at last I will share my way to dive into a new faction or lore. And after this whole tutorial, you may be capable of trying every lore in every faction under normal difficulty. You can think, make your own plans and bring them into reality. Uh, but if you seek more advanced knowledge, you should turn to others' existing tutorials. Anyway, Total War series always welcomes you. Next time, we'll begin from Tyrion's tutorial campaign. See you around, thanks for watching.